Hello, Reese. Hello, McKenzie. Hello, Mason. Hello, Maggie. I want you to come take your seats at Grandpa's Rock School. Not rock music. We're going to talk about rocks. Here are just some of the things that we're going to be talking about in a couple of videos. We're going to be talking about rocks. We're going to be talking about minerals. We're going to be talking about crystals. We're going to be talking about fossils and how fossils are made from dead living, past living creatures. So, I want you to focus. Take away all distractions. Focus means pay attention. Look hard. Don't be worried about something else. Don't be distracted by a bird or an idea. Just for a few minutes, stay focused as we learn about rocks. Today in Rock School, we're going to look at rocks. How they're made and what they are. And even the people who study rocks. The people who study rocks are called geologists. Geo means earth. Ologist means someone who studies or looks hard at something. Today we're going to be geologist. We're going to look hard at something. We're going to learn about it. We're going to use our senses to learn and those senses are our are, are look, touch, taste, smell, and sight. We're going to use our senses to discover and learn more about rocks. One of the tools that a geologist uses is this rock hammer. You can see on one part of the hammer it's a flat hard metal which is kind of like a rock and it is then got a pointed end. This one's a little different than some rock stones but I've been using this one for years when I uh, dig for rocks and when I dig for fossils I use it as a pick to snap rocks and the other end to, to break rocks open and whenever I do that kind of thing I make sure that I wear eye protection goggles so that chips from broken stones don't fly up and hit my eye it's very important because it would happen so you have to have those two Stones sometimes are used as a word for a smaller piece of stone. A rock is usually bigger. Uh, a pebble is small. A uh, stone is a little larger. A rock is bigger. A boulder is gigantic, usually bigger than you. Those are the kind of the names that we use for rocks. Rocks are kind of really special because they were... Uh, formed together in in different ways. One of the ways that they get formed, made to come together, is taking a, a bunch of little little pebbles, little granules like sand granules, so small, and they all get pressed, compressed together. It's like if you had it in your hand and you press something together, and then it sticks. Well. That's kind of what can happen with rocks. They can stick together. And sometimes the minerals inside there will help act like a glue to hold them together so tight that we can't just break them. Now, not all stones are super hard. Some stones are actually soft. And you could break them with your fingers. Um, they don't have a real hard, compressed uh, packing that keeps them together. They can be be soft stones. These are some of the stones that I've collected over time and these have been polished. That means they've been put into a machine and the rough edges have been knocked off or sanded off and then they've had a coating of, uh, of uh, varnish on them. That varnish makes them give a wet look because a lot of times you can look at a stone and it doesn't have uh, a lot of different colors in it but look at that. If you wet it or varnish it then it shines up and th now the other things about rocks is is that they can be made from compression or they actually can be made from melting that they get 
the the different minerals and crystals get so hot that they actually turn into liquid maybe not like water it's called molten it's really thick and volcanoes do that they heat up minerals so much that they they shoot out when they shoot out they hit the air and that hot stone that's all kinds of liquidy sits and cools and forms rocks now rocks are non-organic Organic means living, or even sometimes having lived. These have never lived. They've never breathed. They've never eaten. They've never pooped. They are non-organic or inorganic. Organic means living like, oh, like plants are organic. Animals are organic. People are all organic. Because, well, we eat, we grow, and we poop. So, rocks can come together in a couple different ways. Compression, where they're pressed together with weight, and all the little minerals and different things are compressed and held together real hard or sometimes crumbly and soft or brittle. Another way they do it is with water when the minerals get into that water, the little minerals, and then when the water disappears or evaporates all the little minerals are stuck together and they are rock hard because they're kind of like glued together like slag tights and slag mites and then the other way is is melting from a volcano when a volcano shoots that lava out the lava lands on the ground and with the air outside being cooler than how hot that liquid lava was it starts to cool and turn into stone and it's called a lava rock and here is a lava rock you can see these little holes all in it. Those were bubbles. Air and gases were trapped in that liquid. As it cooled down, those gases wanted to get out. They got out before everything got hard, but they left their little tunnels all through this lava rock. Pretty cool, huh? Well, let's find out some things. Let's, let's test this like we were a geologist. One of the first things that we want to do is, is that we want to look at it. And right now we're looking at it and we can see that it's got all these little holes. So we could ask ourselves, well, why are those little holes and tunnels in here? Well, we found out that they're made because of the gases that were trapped inside this. Let's feel the, the look at the surface so it's porous. Let's 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 feel the weight of it. Well, you can't crone your at, but I can I can tell that it's it's not as heavy as as this stones that have been compressed together. This one is lighter. Oh, okay, we got a lot of uh, different things. I'm gonna touch it, and I'm feeling that it's it's rough, and it's partially rough because of the the. Uh, the, the little tunnels inside there. Now these have been tumbled or, or, or uh, 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 sanded down to be softer, but this one doesn't, you know, it doesn't have a hard edge to it. It's, it's just, it's smooth. Now that's, that's okay. Anyway, we're looking here at this one still. Now another one of the things that we uh, need to do when we go through our, our science of this is that we, well, we need to hear it. Well, can you hear anything? Not really. <laughs> Okay, well, we can't hear anything, but let's try dropping it. Oh, you hear that? Kind of bounced around even a little bit. Well, let's take this stone and drop it. Ooh, wait a minute. You hear that stone? It hardly wants to bounce. It's got like a heavier sound when it hits the ground. This one's got a, it's got a lighter sound, and it rolls around. Maybe more it rolls around because of sharper edges on it. But uh, that's 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 a that's a little you know, different. Well, let's smell it. What do you mean smell it? Well, let's smell it. Well, I'm not really smelling anything. You know, nothing that I can actually smell as being anything different. There could be more study done with machines that talk that smell better than what people can. But huh, I didn't learn too much with the smell except to say that well, it doesn't really have a smell. And now our last sentence is taste. Taste? Yeah. Part of our, our studies is to taste something. Well, Grandpa's going to do it. Don't you do this because you got to make sure of not having germs, especially on stones. I'm going to taste it. Yeah, I just kind of licked it right there and it kind of, I don't know, kind of a little bit like dirt. I didn't really taste anything on it, and 
Yeah, well, but, it's, we, but we learned some things, didn't we? We learned that it's light. It's light because there's all these tunnels through there. We know that it was formed because it was melted and then cooled, and then the air bubbles came out. So that's very interesting. We can we can look at that and know some things about it, and maybe we'll go back to this and find a way to use this um, in like our everyday lives. Let's move on to a different stone. Now, another way that stones can be made is when small granules, remember like a, a, a grain of sand or salt, those are, are many times small minerals or we can call them crystals, they'll get caught in water and the water then might hold those crystals and sometimes, especially in caves where they won't be disturbed, that water will drip from the ceiling of the cave, having those crystals and salts in them, and they'll drip. And when they drip down, they create stalagmites and stalactites. Well, Grandpa, you got salt out here. Well, sometimes uh, crystals are part of stones. Remember we were talking about the little pieces in there? Well, crystals are part of it. They're, they're minerals. And in this case, this crystal has been removed from stones. We'll put it like that. And so we've got salt. We call it salt crystals. Well, let's do our geologist study on it, and we're going to touch it. We're going to touch it, and as we're touching it, we're going to look at it. And we can look under it in a microscope to look at it really close, but what we're finding, aren't we, is, is that, that these are very little pieces. They kind of want to stick together. Uh, I can touch them and feel the, the roughness of them. So they're not smooth. Uh, not, not, not as a group uh, when they're singled down. So we kind of took a look at it. Let's, let's hear it. No, I can't. I can't. It's just really so light. Let me put it up to my ear. Hey, can you hear that? Hear that grinding sound? It's so many little ones pushing together, it's causing friction, so it doesn't move real slippery. Huh, so salt does have a sound. Now, let's smell it. Got to smell it really careful because you don't want it to, little crystals to go up your nose, but... Yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a smell. I I, I can smell it. I, and knowing salt, I can only answer it as being, well, it's got a salty smell. You can smell salt like in sea air when you're at the ocean. The water's uh, uh, drips get blown up into the air, real small droplets, and you actually can breathe them in, and you can smell salt in the air. And it's because it's different. It isn't just water coming in. It's actually got salt in it. Well, since these are still parts of stone, and we're going to finish our studies, which again means focused and looked hard at this, one of the other pieces of our senses is taste. So we tasted a lava rock, we tasted the other rock, we didn't get any taste, but Grandpa's now going to take some of the salt and I'm going to, I'm going to taste it. Well, wow, I, I, a lot of it just went right onto my tongue and it's really got a good taste. Now, you wouldn't want to put a whole lot of this in your mouth at once, but it made my mouth water. It's uh, got a really nice taste to it. You know, sometimes when things taste good to us, it means that it's good for us. Now, that doesn't mean some things that taste bad aren't good for us. Sometimes you can, well, you, your tastes change. Like right now, you might love chicken nuggets, but uh, later on, you're going to love... Uh, vegetable soup or, or beets, you know, beet plants. Grandpa never liked beets. Now that I'm older, my tastes have changed. I like beets. And guess what? They're good for you. Well, anyhow, that's all the time that we have today. This is just the start of looking at uh, rocks and minerals and fossils and all these things to be discovered. But we don't have any more time because uh, we'll end up losing focus and uh, other things to do. But one thing you need to always remember when it comes to focus, Nanny and Grandpa are always focused on you. You are someone we study hard because we love you and we want the best for you. You have a good day.